Vivo has launched these two new phones here. We've got the V25 with a 6.44 inch flat AMOLED screen, 90 hertz, powered by the Dimensity 900. And then the V25 Pro, powered by the Dimensity 1300, a larger 6.56 inch AMOLED screen. It's got a curvature to it, either side of the screen, and 120 hertz. Battery difference, well, 4,630 versus 4,500. Charging difference as well, 66 watts versus 44. The camera modules, well, they're the same, but the back at least looks the same because it's got the same cameras in them too. 64 megapixel main sensor with optical image stabilization, eight megapixel ultra wide, two megapixel macro, and then the front facing cameras where we've got a teardrop design versus a cutout. So the pro model gets a 32 megapixel selfie camera with autofocus. And then the non-pro V25 has a 50 megapixel camera with autofocus. So I'll be going over their key differences, performance differences, battery life, sound, and cameras compared side by side to let you know the differences between the two of the V25 series. Now what is included with both of these phones is very similar. It's pretty much identical here. So we've got a TPU case, but of course it's gonna be slightly different on the other model because it's not rounded. It's got the square edges to it. There is a warranty card and important information. The charges are about the same size as you can see here. The only difference is we've got 66 watt charging with the Pro model. The non-pro model is 44 watts. Now I really like this, that they have included here, obviously a type A to type C cable, but we get some headphones. Now these headphones are 3.5 millimeter ones, but before you get your hopes up, no, it doesn't have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on both of these, but they do include this, which is a type C to 3.5 millimeter adapter. So you get exactly the same things with the V25 and then the V25 Pro. So what are the other differences? Well, when you look at them, the design wise, very different here. Size difference in the screen, so 6.44 inches versus 6.56. So they're both full HD plus displays, both AMOLEDs, but this one is flat. So the non-pro version, flat, but we've got the teardrop design there and larger looking bezels because it doesn't have the curvature to it. Now the frame around the outside, you can see is also flat there too, but I like it. I actually do kind of like the build and look of the non-pro model a little more co uh, compared to the pro here. So the pro has curved at the back where it's all squared off with the non-pro V25 here. Camera modules are in the same location and then these cameras, they're pretty much the same on the back here. So we're looking at a main 64 megapixel sensor with optical image stabilization, eight megapixel ultra wide and two megapixel there for uh, depth macro and I mean that's yeah pretty average there they're still using the two megapixel cameras I really wish they wouldn't do that and instead give us a better ultra wide camera would be good so there's another little trick up the sleeve too with the non-pro version with this color here which actually changes and I'll demonstrate it that is this back is color changing to uv lights and I happen to have a uv flashlight here so once I flash this on it and just go over the outline of the stencil here just to give you an idea, very quickly do this. And once I take this off, you'll be able to see that woman there on the surfboard come through on the back, which is kind of neat that you can do this. Now, this is temporary. Eventually, in a matter of minutes or so, that will start to fade away. But still, it's kind of a cool thing that you can use stencils on the back of it to do this. So it's a glass material, but it's got that color changing uh, chemical, that effect to it, which, uh, yeah, I like it. It's different. You can also get the pro version with that color changing glass, just that I happen to have the black version. Now the black one here, it shimmers this material in direct sunlight. You can see and even bright lights and I do like it. It's a nice material, does not show any fingerprints at all. It will be a little bit slippery, however, in winter, of course, once your hands get a little bit cooler, which is normal. Both of the phones do have a plastic frame around them. We've got our two loudspeakers. There is no secondary loudspeaker. Unfortunately, that's just it. The Type-C ports, microphone, and then a difference here with the SIM tray. So on the V25 Pro, it does not take any micro SD card. So it's two nano SIMs. However, if you give up on a nano SIM with the V25, the normal, or should I say non-pro model, you can add a micro SD card, which is good. Then up the top, we have secondary microphone. So it does have noise cancellation in calls and stereo for video.
Now with the displays, there is a difference here in the refresh rate. So we're looking at 90 hertz versus 120 hertz. So you can see a little bit of banding coming up and down a little bit more on the V25 versus the V25 Pro. Both of them do not have a DC dimming option, which is sad. I really do like that because people that are more susceptible to flicker or that banding, if you do see it, especially at low brightnesses, you may see it on both of these phones here. So brightness wise, they are a little bit apart. They're not as similar as you would think. We are looking at on the non-pro version, so the V25 of a slightly brighter screen, this one does pump out just over 730 nits versus about 660 nits of brightness that I'm measuring here with the V25 Pro. Because they are AMOLED panels, the colors are uniform. You can see with whites here with different colors there that you are going to see that there's no like pixel dimming around the edges like IPS panels. Both screens do have the same settings. The biggest one, of course, is this to do with the refresh rate. So the 90 hertz versus the 120. Of course, the 120, when you are scrolling in menus, does seem a little bit smoother, but it's not a massive difference, 90 to 120, as the difference you get from, say, 60 to 120. Now, of course, you can use 60 if you want to save on battery life. Both of them have their screen color mode here with Fun Touch OS. So you can go in and, and tweak the color temperature, those white balances. Then the fingerprint reader in both models is the same. The location is a little bit too low for my liking. I wish it was a bit higher, but we are looking at about the exact same speed between both of them. They are using the same hardware with the fingerprint readers. Both are on Android 12, both run Fun Touch OS latest versions, had some firmware updates come through already for them. So there's a big difference in the hardware because we are looking at the dimensity 900 with eight gigabytes of RAM versus right here, we have then the Dimensity 1300 with 12 gigabytes of RAM. Now, both of them do have some virtual RAM allocated. In fact, eight gigabytes, it's quite a bit, but this is basically a caching system. So performance wise, yes, it is a little bit more quick and snappy, the Pro model, as you would expect, a little more fluid because of the 120 hertz, 120 frames per second versus 90 frames per second. But there's not a huge, huge difference, but yes, it is noticeable, I will mention that. So when you go into the settings, if you have a quick look under, we can find here RAM and storage, there is that option there. So you can see that it's got the virtual allocated eight gigabytes more, the caching and eight gigabytes there just to help speed things up. So the gestures have been very good on both of them and they both run very smooth and fluid. No real noticeable lag. At a couple of times I may have seen the Dimensity 900 have a little micro stutter with the animations, but that has really been it. They both perform really solidly, but let's jump into some synthetic benchmarks and a few other things too. Both models come with a bit of bloatware installed. You can see we've got LinkedIn, Spotify, TikTok, a few things to uninstall. And I really wish brands would toe down, tone down on the amount of the bloatware that they do pre-install when you first power it on. So both of the phones, the 225 gigabyte versions here that I do have, you're looking at about 225 gigabytes of free available space. However, micro SD card support on the non-pro model, we don't have it with the Pro, which is a real shame that they removed it. So charge time, we are looking at only a difference of nine minutes. So the 44 watt charging versus 66 watt charging, that's it. Even though this has a larger battery, okay, that kind of evens out a bit. So a larger battery means it needs a little more time. There's not, not really that much of a difference at all. And that's when it comes to the battery life, which you see here, barely any difference. And we're talking only two minutes. So how can that be? Well, we do have 330 milliamp hours more on this particular model here, but because it's a more powerful chipset, that's why. Now, both of the displays were calibrated to 200 nits of brightness, and they're almost identical there when it comes to the battery life. Uh, so it's kind of, we're looking at about nine hours of on-screen time with very light tasks on these, or around about eight hours. So the battery life is pretty good actually on both of them. So they both do support Widevine level one, as you'd expect there with these. And then the power difference between them, well, of course, we're going from a flagship, well, mid-range to flagship chipset. As expected, there is quite a bit of a difference here. So with the V25 Pro, if you intend to game a lot, it's probably the one to go for the Dimensity 1300 versus the Dimensity 900. The Dimensity 900, however, is a much cooler running chip. You can see it only heated up and only went up 3.6 degrees versus 7.4, doing the same exact 
test there. So there is a bit of a difference. Now the things like I can mention that camera two API, it's only full, not the level three. So you might have a bit of trouble getting Gcam ports. And because they're both MediaTek phones, you will run into a bit of a problem there, I think, to try and find Gcam ports or use open camera and things like that for third party camera launches, camera software, sorry, applications. As for audio now, well, there is a bit of a difference. Even though they've both just got single down with fine loudspeakers, such a shame we don't have a secondary one in the earpiece. Type C to 3.5 millimeter quality sounds very similar. However, the Pro model is louder and that loudness pulls through with the loudspeaker too, that it does sound a little bit better to my ears here. And this one, not quite as loud on the V25. Now voice calls on both of them, they sound pretty much the same to me. They are probably using the exact same hardware when it comes to microphones and earpieces. I believe they probably would be, and that's why they sound the same there. So I'll just give you a quick sample. First the Pro, and then you'll hear the V25, which is noticeably quieter. Moving over to the cameras now. So for the front facing video quality, we do have just 1080p 30 and 1080p 60. Now you probably would have noticed that it is shaking around a little bit as I walk. That is because there is no electronic image stabilization. So this is disappointing to see. I do hope that they can add this with a firmware update. Now the audio bit rate on both of these here is 256 kilobits per second. And that buzzing you're hearing in the background, it's nothing to do with the audio quality. That is a cicada. So there pretty loud here in summer at the moment. So the difference between the megapixels with the front facing cameras I mentioned before when we looked at the design, we've got 50 megapixels on the Vivo V25, whereas the V25 Pro does then have a 32 megapixel front facing camera. Both of them do have autofocus. You can see I'm in focus here, but then you can focus on the background and then I can go back to myself here and it's going to get the lock on me. So it's a good handy feature to have that autofocus, but please, Vivo, add electronic image stabilization. The rear cameras have optical image stabilization. It's a 64 megapixel sensor and it can shoot 4K, 34K, 60. They both seem pretty similar, but there I think are a little bit of a differences, some differences with the software optimization and the way it looks. Probably could just be the screens here as I'm recording. So quite steady footage and autofocus on both of them. Seems to be pretty good. I haven't really encountered any problems. And I'll just jog it here, testing out that stabilization. It's good to see we do have optical. It should make a difference as well with low light photography, which I'll get onto. The ultra wide camera can only do 1080p, so no 4K. The quality from the eight megapixel sensor is definitely the weakest point with the cameras with these Vivo V25 series here, that it's not amazing quality, but at least it does have electronic image stabilization as a walk ahead. It's just a shame that it's not a sensor capable of 4K video, then it would look quite a bit better. Onto some camera samples. So portrait mode, very different on both of them. Looks warmer on the V25 Pro. It also crops in a little more, more pleasant photo. Then side by side here with the main camera, but two times digital zoom, the V25 Pro looks the best. And here with whole selfie shots, um, here it looks like I'm wearing makeup. So a lot of skin smoothing going on, not so good. And Vera, again, is the difference in the color, more warmer on the V25 Pro. Same with the ultra wide. Ultra wide is the poorest and warmer colors here with the V25 Pro. And then night shots, I'll just give you this one sample because on both of them it's terrible. Lots of noise on the V25 Pro, yuck, looks yellowish. And then it just doesn't come out great on the V25. So they need to do quite a bit of work when it comes to their night shot mode. And gaming performance, so this one's obvious that a demanding game like Genshin Impact is noticeably running a little bit slower here than the V25 Pro because, well, it's got about half the power of the GPU. It doesn't mean it can't play a game like Genshin Impact here, which is on the highest possible settings at the moment, set to 60 frames per second, but clearly it's not actually running at 60. It's more like 30 something, 40s, and you do notice just those frame dips now and then coming through a lot more than the Pro model. 
Then, of course, with the V25 Pro, it is noticeably faster, smoother, good gameplay. Now, what does really surprise me is not the performance, is the fact that it doesn't really seem to throttle and the thermals are excellent. They're really good. Even after playing for 30 minutes, the phone is barely getting warm. So then, of course, there is a difference in pricing. I don't know the exact prices yet, but this, of course, is the cheaper model with the more low-powered chipset. So I actually prefer the screen in this one. It's a little brighter. 90 hertz for me is still fine. Okay, I wish it had 120, but being slightly brighter and a flat AMOLED, I do actually enjoy it a little more, and the squared off design, I really do like it. A little bit lighter, but you really don't notice that much of a difference between both of them. So what doesn't really have too much of a difference is the cameras. We still have the same shortfall shortcomings with the ultra wide camera looking pretty average, especially with video quality, front facing vlog footage. Oh dear, no electronic image stabilization. That's a shame. And we don't get 4K support either, which the chipset does support, but they didn't want to add it for the front facing cameras. So a big surprise there with the battery life. Like I thought, well, surely the more powerful, maybe more efficient chipset and the slightly larger battery life, I mean, it's got a battery size, sorry, 330 milliamp hours should do a lot better, but it's identical battery life, basically. Just goes to show you that it's not always going to be as clear cut as you think when you compare these models. So build quality on both of them is very good. I do like the fact we get a micro SD card slot with the V25, which you don't with the promo, unfortunately, and both are lacking. Uh, dual loudspeakers, only single loudspeakers, and no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. But of course, if I was going to pick one, personally, I would probably go, if you game a lot, I would go for the V25 Pro. That Dimensity 1300 is an impressive chipset. What I like about it is you get performance around that of a Snapdragon 888, or maybe the 870, and similar thermals to the Snapdragon 870. The fact that it really doesn't get hot, it doesn't throttle, it gets barely warm. So really good thermals, uh, with both of these phones here, including that Dimensity 900, barely heats up at all. It gets slightly warm to the touch. And that's after you game for about an hour. So incredible thermals with both these. They both do have very nice screens on them. There's just those shortcomings there with the cameras really that I've pointed out. So there we go. That's the difference between the V25 and the V25 Pro from Vivo.